Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Zorin OS 15.2. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. So I'm here on the ZorinOS.com website where we're gonna go ahead and download Zorin from. It's very easy to get to the downloads page. You can either go ahead and hit the download Zorin OS right here or up top hit download, it'll take you to the same page. You'll first be shown a few editions of Zorin, the ultimate core light and education. You can compare the editions if you want, but we'll go scroll through them real quick. The ultimate version, which you get a few extra things here, as it says over 20 games, some more compatibility, as well as some business and media apps for a price, but you can keep scrolling down and then we have the core essentials. So the basics that comes with uh, LibreOffice and most of the utilities that you'll need for everyday use. And the best thing about this version is that you can download it for free. If you keep going down, there are a few more versions, the Zorin 15.2 Lite version, which will get you a lightweight desktop and base system that runs really great on older computers. And finally, Zorin OS 15.2 Education for educational purposes. But what we're interested in is the core. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the download button. And it says that you should put in your email address and sign up and download, but uh, we can just click the skip to download button and first download it before we give our email address up. And uh, now that it's begun downloading, and now it's begun downloading and it'll take a few minutes here. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD of my choice. So let me launch Belena Etcher. Just simply type in Belena. It should pop right up. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and select the image that we just got done downloading. So you can see here I have the Zorin OS 15.2 core 64-bit version. So this is for a 64-bit architecture processor, so make sure you have one. Go ahead and select the image and hit open. Next, we want to select the device where we want to flash the Zorin OS installer onto. So give me a moment to put my USB in, and it will automatically populate the USB if you go ahead and put it in. But if you have more than one USB, CD, or DVD, you can hit the change button and select the proper drive on where you want to flash the Zorin installer onto. Just be careful selecting your device because whichever device you select and flash onto, the Belenetra app will erase all the contents on that, on that USB, CD, or DVD. So make sure you select the proper one since I only have the one here and I know I don't have anything on this USB. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Following that, I'll go ahead and hit the flash button and give Belen Etcher administrative privileges so it can flash. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Zorin 15 onto, and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by, by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10 and then finding a tab usually called boot order and exchanging the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. All right, if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. So the option we want is the first option here, which is try or install Zorin OS. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card, you probably want this option instead. The install portion will be about the same, but this will allow for the use of the proprietary drivers for NVIDIA instead. So what I'm gonna do is choose my first option and hit enter. This will go ahead and load us into the live image of Zorin OS 15. And here you go. We're greeted by the installer. We can go ahead and select whatever language you want to run through the installer with here on the left hand side underneath welcome. I'm going to run it through with English and then I'm going to go ahead and click the install Zorin OS. 
You can also try Zorin OS before you install it. You'll be loaded into the live image of Zorin. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and select my keyboard layout. So English US is fine for me, which is the default here. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in something so I can verify that my keyboard works right. So I typed in QWERTY and it came out QWERTY, so that seems all good. I'll go ahead and hit the continue button once I've set my keyboard layout. Following that, we're asked a few questions here. Do we wanna download updates while installing Zorin OS? It'll save us time up front, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that option. Next, uh, it asks if we want to go ahead and install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. So some Wi-Fi adapters will not work without installing third-party software and drivers. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that box as well. And then the last part here is for some data collection. It says it counts the numbers of users anonymously, but I'm not gonna go ahead and choose this option. You can do whatever you like and then go ahead and hit continue. Since I have a storage disk that has absolutely nothing on it, Zorin has detected that there's no current operating systems on here, so I have three options here. I can erase the entire disk and install Zorin OS. As it says, warning, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, any data that you have on the current storage disk. So make sure that whatever you're installing Zorin OS onto is completely empty of data and you're ready to go ahead and erase the entire disk. The other two options you have is to encrypt the new Zorin installation, which adds a little bit of security and forces you to go ahead and put a password in every time you log in to access your hard drive. And then you have the LVM version, which stands for Logical Volume Management. This helps you with such things as managing volumes and makes it easier for you to repartition storage spaces after the fact. So if you plan on changing up the storage space, you may want to go with this option. All right, I'm not gonna choose either of these extra options. You can choose them both or just one if you want, and then you can go ahead and hit the Install Now button. At this point, it's gonna tell you that it's about to write the changes to the disks, and it's just making sure that you want to go ahead and continue because after this, you will erase everything on the disk that was detected. So I know that I'm all good, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Continue. Next, I'm asked for a time zone. Today, I'll be in Denver, Colorado, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Next, we're asked for some information about us. So what's our name? Savvy Nick works for me. Savvy Nick I'll use for the computer name, and this computer name is what other devices will see on the network as well. Pick a username, Savvy Nick also works, and then type in a password and confirm that password. You can also choose to log in automatically, but just be aware if someone shuts down the computer and then restarts it, they will be logged in automatically and won't have to put a password in in order to access your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the require my password to log in option and hit continue. So now the base system install has started and at this point it will also download any updates since we checked that option. So Zorin OS is a Ubuntu based stable release distribution whose main focus is to serve users a familiar environment to Windows. This makes it a great place to start if you're a beginner who is transitioning for the first time to Linux from platforms such as Windows or Mac and even offers the ability to run some very familiar Windows programs since it utilizes Flatpak and Snap as a package management system. Again, this is a great place to start for beginners and you'll definitely notice some similarities between Windows and Zorin OS 15. All right, now that the installation is complete, we need to go ahead and restart our computer in order to use the new installation. And while restarting, you'll wanna make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have in the computer so you don't boot back into the installer or the live image of the system. Otherwise, you'll have to reboot once more and take out the media to get to your newly installed system. So let's go ahead and restart now. This is a convenient message because at this point we can go ahead and remove our installation media and then we can press enter. I like when operating systems do this for you. So once you have removed your installation media, go ahead and press enter. All right, and once the system's restarted, you'll be welcomed by your user. Go ahead and click on your user and type in the password that you gave it. And let's let the desktop environment load. 
And here you go. At this point, you've installed Zorin 15.2 successfully. Congratulations on your new system. Let's go ahead and go through it just a little bit just to see what's available here to us. As you notice, it's very similar to a Windows layout, at least what may look like Windows 7 or somewhat like Windows 10, the latest. If you go to the bottom left, you have a start menu. And in the start menu, you have subcategories and you can also search throughout your applications down here on the left. On the top right hand side, you have your user that's currently logged in and a couple folders or directories that pertain to the user. And then at the bottom, we have software. If you wanna go ahead and use their package manager in order to get more packages here, as you can see here, there's plenty of available applications that you can go ahead and download right away. You'll also get a software update message and you can look at the details of the message here if you want. And uh, I'll go ahead and install these later, but to go back here, you can also log out, lock and power off the computer from here. Following that, you have Firefox, which is the default web browser for Zorin, and the file manager, which you can launch and get through your file system with. And here's another place you can go ahead and launch the application manager from. And then on the right hand side, you have a little bar that allows you to get between your current wired connection or wireless connection, the user and log out and go through account settings if you like. And then on the bottom left, you have access to settings, locking the computer and shutting it down as well as volume control up at the top. In the far right corner, you have access to the current date time as well as any notifications that might come from different applications. You can set do not disturb here as well. You can also look at the weather and add other clocks and a calendar that you can use as well and view the current date. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Zorin Linux 15.2. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.